Hi, this is Tarek Sami, Madi Mahovald and Manos Brilakis, and this is case 178 for the Manual of CTO Interventions. This is a case illustrating challenges with uh, crossing the lesion with a microcatheter and a balloon after successful guide wire crossing. The patient was an elderly gentleman with previous coronary bypass that presented with non-ST elevation myocardial infarction because of thrombosis of a saphenous vein graft that was recanalized with thrombectomy and balloon angioplasty, but then he continued to have significant angina. He was referred to us for PCI of the native obtuse marginal CTO. This is his baseline angiogram when he presented with non-ST elevation myocardial infarction. He did have some disease in the left main. There is a CTO of the obtuse marginal. It is unclear where actually the obtuse marginal was originating. A vein graft to the diagonal was patent, as was the lima to the LAD. However, the culprit vessel was the saphenous vein graft to the obtuse marginal that had previously placed tens. This graft was successfully recanalized after multiple rounds of thrombectomy and balloon angioplasty. The patient, however, continued to have angina, which actually worsened. And this is how the vessel looks like when he came back two months later for attempting to recanalize the native obtuse marginal CTO. He already has significant 90% restenosis within the saphenous vein graft. Regarding the obtuse marginal CTO, it has an ambiguous proximal cap. Actually, there is um, a stent that was placed into the circumflex, so we don't really know where the obtuse marginal is coming in. There's some calcium there that suggests that this is probably the entry point, but there's absolutely no stump to guide us to go undergrade. Fortunately, we do have the bypass graft filling the obtuse marginal retrograde. There's significant disease in the distal vessel, distal to the CTO. And as a result, given the ambiguity of the proximal cap, we decided to go with the primary retrograde approach through the saphenous vein graft. We did use a Corsair XS 150 cm microcatheter and a Sion Black that easily went retrograde. However, the microcatheter could not cross, so we had to balloon across the distal anastomosis to be able to advance the retrograde microcatheter. We tried to advance a Sion Black and a Pilot 200 retrograde, but they seem to go in the extra plug space. We see the wire wrapping around the circumflex stand. We had difficulty getting the retrograde microcatheter closer to the cap, and to overcome this challenge, we did balloon angioplasty with a Subfire 1.0 millimeter balloon advanced retrograde. We then tried again, after advancing the microcatheter further up, to cross into the proximal true lumen using a Pilot 200 and a Gaia second, but unfortunately the wires seemed to just wrap around in the extra plug space. We decided to do a brief undergrade attempt using the retrograde guide wire as a marker of where the ostium of the vessel was. We did use a Venture angulated microcatheter along with a Gaia second and a Horner 14, but unfortunately we could not advance a guide wire undergrade. We went back and did an attempt to cross retrograde using a Gaia second guide wire, and this time the wire actually successfully crossed into the proximal true lumen and into the undergrade guide catheter. We performed anchoring of the, undergrade, of the retrograde guide wire, but then we could not get the retrograde microcatheter to come all the way to the undergrade guide catheter. So we used a retrograde sapphire balloon, and after doing that with the balloon and using a new microcatheter, we were then able to advance a new turnpike microcatheter along with extra support from a six French guide liner through the saphenous vein graft. We were able to advance it all the way into the undergrade guide catheter and then externalize an R350 and then pull back the retrograde microcatheter. At this point, we thought that the case, the challenging part was over and now we'll be just balloon and standing. However, we had the same problem. We faced retrograde, we faced the exact same problem undergrade. We could not advance even small balloons through the proximal cap. We tried with a 1.0 subfire, a threader, a 2.0 millimeter Takeru, and nothing would go through. We also tried with undergrade microcatheters, a Corsair, as well as a Turnpike LP, but once again, nothing would go through. There's significant calcification, and also maybe there was some interaction with the previously placed circumflex stand. So, what to do next? 
This is the algorithm for balloon and crossable lesion. We tried the small balloon. We tried grenadoplasty, rupturing the 1.0 and 1.5 balloons without uh, success. We had very strong support from the externalized wire. We tried microcatheters, did not work. The next step should probably have been to do laser, but we instead tried to do atherectomy. Unfortunately, we had a lot of difficulty with um, atherectomy. We advanced the retrograde uh, um, rota wire after getting the retrograde microcatheter to go into the undergrade guy catheter. But then the rota wire could not come out. We had to snare it with a small 2.4 millimeter snare. So very, very challenging, had to pull very hard. And eventually we externalized it. But then we had a lot of difficulty loading the rotablator over the, the wire. We actually had very little wire come out. And part of the problem is, which came to haunt us, is that in the beginning we had used a 100 centimeter long guide casters instead of 90, which would be the default for retrograde cases. And as a result, we had very little wire coming out. To cut the long story short, we had a lot of difficulty. We eventually lost um, um, everything and we decided to start again. So we started crossing again with uh, this time engaging with short 90 centimeter long guide catheters. Fortunately, perhaps because we had done the crossing with a microcatheter retrograde, we were able to cross without much difficulty using a retrograde gladius guide wire that uh, crossed uh, through the occlusion and then um, uh, went into the proximal portion of the vessel. We externalized once again the R350. And then this time, maybe because we crossed through a different part of the occlusion, we were able to advance and undergrade 1.0 millimeter subfire pro balloon, and then progressively larger balloons and successfully dilated the proximal cap, as well as the CTO and the diffusal disease distal vessel. So we're now ready to place stents across the bifurcation, but before doing that, we want to take care of the distal portion of the vessel, and there was significant disease actually along the area of the distal SVG anastomosis. So the next step here is to advance a guide wire undergrade into the distal portion of the saphenous vein graft. To, to achieve this, we used a Sasuki, that's a dual lumen microcatheter, along with a polymer jacket wire, but we had a very hard time advancing a wire undergrade. We ballooned across the anastomosis as there was some disease there, but then we had difficulty. We ended up using a, uh, the filter FC in a hairpin fashion, which did not work, but then surprisingly, then uh, the wire found its way and went undergrade. We ballooned across the distal anastomosis. We can see the significant tenting of the obtuse marginal from the saphenous vein graft but then had difficulty delivering despite the support from the retrograde gear. Eventually, we were able to deliver a 2.25 millimeter drag eluting stand that was deployed across the distal anastomosis. Of course, we removed the retrograde gear before deploying the stand. We then deployed another stand in the diffusely diseased part of the obtuse marginal. And then we decided to use a dual stand strategy for the circumflex obtuse marginal bifurcation because of the significant disease in the proximal circumflex and there was also significant disease in the left main as well. So we deployed first the side branch, the OM stand. The stand was crushed with an undergrade balloon. We rewired, that was actually easy, and then did the first kissing balloon inflation for O balloon in the circumflex and 2.5 into the obtuse marginal. We then deployed a 4O by 38 millimeters drag eluting stand in the main vessel. But now we had a lot of difficulty. We had a very hard time rewiring into the circumflex. We were able to get some wires under gray looped around the new stand, but then had a very hard time getting through. So what to do in DK crash when there's difficulty wiring the side branch? Essentially, we can do two things, either use different wire or use a microcatheter. In terms of wires, the most commonly used ones are polymer jacketed wires like the Sion Black or the Filter FC. In terms of microcatheters, probably the most commonly used one is a dual lumen microcatheter like the Sasuki or the Twin Pass. Also, an angulated microcatheter like Venture or Supercross can be used or the standard microcatheter to allow easy guide wire exchanges and then also can modify the plaque once getting through. 
So in this case, we did try with the Sasuki as well as a Sion Black polymer jacketed wire. But after multiple attempts, we were unable to advance a guide wire under grid. What to do next? We still had retrograde access to the vessel. And we thought that maybe retrograde crossing might be easier with a retrograde guide wire. And sure enough, this is a polymer jacketed wire that was pushed and then successfully crossed with a loop and back into the undergrade guide catheter. Our initial plan here would be to advance the retrograde microcatheter, externalize, and then finish with a second kissing balloon inflation. But we had problems again, and the problem was the same as before. We just could not get the retrograde microcatheter to go through. We tried also with a fine cross, which is lower profile, but exactly the same problem. It could not go through that area of the bifurcation. So what to do next? We inflated a balloon to trap. Again, to no avail, the retrograde microcatheter would not cross through. What we end up doing is um, actually using the T-pin technique. This is the retrograde guide wire. We advanced an undergrade Corsair microcatheter, which actually fairly easily with the first attempt, the undergrade Corsair went over the tip of the retrograde guide wire and then was able to cross through the ostium of the obtuse marginal into the obtuse marginal. We then removed the retrograde wire and then advanced an undergrade workhorse wire. After doing that, we now have access to the vessel again and we're able to do the second kissing balloon inflation, 4.0 and uh, 3.0 millimeter balloons. There was still competitive flow from the bypass graft, although it did have significant stenosis. We debated about it, but decided to occlude the graft to minimize the risk of thrombosing, the bifurcation, given the challenges we had at canalizing this vessel. And this was achieved by using coiling with a 3.0 millimeter penumbra pod overlapped more proximally with two 15 centimeter packing coils, successfully occluded the saphenous vein graft. And this is a nice final result with Timothy flow in the obtuse marginal and occlusion of flow into the saphenous vein graft. Multiple lessons from this fairly long and complex case. The first one is for the retrograde approach to always use guide catheters that are short, 90 centimeters if they're available. The second is about how to troubleshoot cases in which the microcatheter cannot advance the retrograde microcatheter through the occlusion. We ended up using more support, small balloon modification with a retrograde balloon, and eventually the retrograde microcatheter crossed. But then we had the same challenge, advancing an undergrade microcatheter through the occlusion. And uh, the solution in the end was actually stopping the crossing attempts and we had to rewire again. And we probably rewire through a different location because the second time we were able to advance small balloons. The first time, small balloons, Microcatheters, strong support did not work. Retrospectively, the one thing we did not do that might have helped is do a laser over the externalized guide wire. And finally, we had a challenge with the second rewiring of TK crash. Could not get a wire to go into the obtuse marginal branch because of the angulation. The way we solve this problem is by going retrograde, advancing a guide wire retrogradely through the bifurcation and then into the undergrade guide catheter. We unfortunately could not get the retrograde microcatheter to get through this time, but we did the tip-in technique, advanced an undergrade microcatheter, inserted the tip of it over the tip of the retrograde guide wire, advanced it through the bifurcation, and then exchanged the retrograde for an undergrade wire, and we were then able to do the second kissing balloon inflation. Thank you.